if somebody gave that to me and didn't tell me what it was, I would actually be a little confused. On the nose, actually more reminds me of whiskey. We are back at Big Whiskey Rebellion, and today we have a very different kind of show because we're not just talking about whiskey, we're talking about a whiskey and a tequila. And you will notice that this tequila actually almost matches the color of this particular rye. This is the six year age stated piggyback rye from Whistlepig. And then this is the Dolce Vita five year age stated tequila. You don't see too many age statements on tequila. I was actually very excited when I first saw this product because I've never seen an age statement like that prominent on a bottle. So I bought it having no idea what it was like and it was kind of expensive. It's a $200 bottle. As soon as I tried it, I was very excited and I couldn't wait to talk about this product on this show. Uh, Daryl hates tequila, just so you know. Brian also hates tequila. We're just gonna, I'm gonna keep this one for myself. Chris, Chris also <laughs> hates this tequila. So I'm gonna pour three of these for me and then they can have the ride. Uh, actually, no, we just, I just thought it'd be a really cool thing to kind of discuss some similarities and differences between a whiskey and a tequila when it comes to aging. Why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourself while I start pouring? I'm Chris, Chris Weibel. I uh, definitely like tequila and I like uh, whiskey and as of this year I'm a scotch drinker. So uh, I'm, I'm enjoying the, uh, the spirits and uh, I'd have to say it's because of that. I'm Daryl. Uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. Two of my favorite spirits side by side. I'm really looking uh, my name is Brian Hobbs. I'm one of the bartenders here at McCormick's. And I will say tequila might be uh, my weakest spirit. Um, I was never a tequila drinker, probably because of college. It was a lot of cheap, nasty tequila, and it's taken me quite a while to get over that flavor. I'm super excited about this five year. Yeah, it's, it's actually incredible. Daryl and I have both tasted this. We gave it our thumbs up of approval. Uh, so he's the only one that's had it besides myself. But you guys get to try these today. And uh, the, the real kind of conversation of this particular show is as much about the difference in products as it is about the aging because you don't see a lot of well-aged tequilas out in the world unless they're very expensive. And uh, even though this is a $200 bottle, I actually think that's a really good price considering the amount of aging that it has on it. So I was really excited to be able to find this. I thought you liked cheap and nasty, Brian. <laughs> I mean, no. when it comes to certain things. I have some stamps. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> I was gonna say, unlike me. <laughs> so the, the tequila itself on the nose actually more reminds me of whiskey. It's, yes. it's really interesting. The bottle is a bit confusing uh, because it says Barricas de Napa Valley. I'm guessing they're ex wine barrels, but it doesn't really get that far into it. Uh, I, when I tasted it, I did not get a wine note, but that doesn't mean that it's not there. But if they're using ex wine casks, that's really cool. I, I, I actually hope to start a whiskey brand myself, and my plan is to use Virginia wine barrels as finishing barrels. Um, I've never seen a tequila do that before, so. The tequila is surprisingly way more mellow. I would expect all the spice coming off of the rye. Yeah. But having it right after the tequila, I'm like, ooh, this one is mine. Yes. Oh man, tequila is really good. It is. It's completely different, but like it has a, a very familiar sweetness, mm -hmm. which I think is most likely the barrel. Yes. Um, trying to figure out how to describe it. It's almost like a little bit of vanilla in each of them. On the first sip of this tequila, when I first put it in my mouth, it just felt like I had whiskey in my mouth. And it wasn't until after I started to swallow the tequila that I really started tasting that smoky agave quality. Oh, yes. Yeah, and so it's a really weird ride drinking this product because when you first put it in there, it's whiskey. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, at least in my brain, oh, nice. it's registering as whiskey. And then I take it further and I start to swallow. I'm like, wow, this is not whiskey. It's a really weird, but great it's product. Terrific. It's really good. Yeah, I, I wish there was more really complex. of these out there. I think you could almost, as you're saying, like, hey, if I didn't tell you, pass this off as whiskey until they finished it. You actually, know? if somebody gave that to me and didn't tell me what it was, I would actually be a little confused. Mm -hmm. It almost tastes like a hybrid 
like a combination of whiskey and great tequila. Um, and I like the six year whistle pig, but what's crazy is these are almost the same age yeah. in a barrel, but this is richer and denser. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if it's the heat that happens where they're aging. Yeah. Uh, it says Austin, Texas on the bottle. So I'm guessing that that's where they're aging at. It's pretty hot there. Probably a lot more reduction of capacity inside of the barrel. A lot more volatility, that's for sure. What's the proof on that whistle pig? They're both 100. 100? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. 99 point. OK. <laughs> Close enough. Actually, it's 48.28%. It's so wow. 96.56, which is a really weird. Mm. Yes. <laughs> 100-ish. And then this is 100 proof, which you don't see yeah. tequilas at 100 proof either very often. So somebody obviously went through and like started proof testing the flavors and decided at 100 proof this was the, the way they should go. Which is really cool because you, I mean, I've never seen that myself. I taste sherry. So it's definitely the, it's, it shows that the cask that it's aged in uh, means so much. Sure. And um, and having had a lot of tequila, different types of tequilas, um, and I never really, I didn't like the cheap stuff. I just yeah. never, never, I couldn't drink it. Right. Um, and uh, it, it really is complex. I mean, there's a lot of flavors. And I know that the agave really, you know, how they handle that means so much. And you really can tell <laughs> it tastes like whiskey. Yes. And, when you have tequila that tastes like whiskey, you don't want to ever go back. Right. Well, sorry, buddy. Two hundred dollar bottles for you. Only <laughs> <now>. <laughs> yes. So it's just really, uh, it's definitely complex. I mean, uh, I like, um, I like. It would be, it would be nice if the, if the bottle said really what they did with it, um, just for information. So when it comes to the sherry note coming in your head, I mean, sherries are made from grapes, just like a wine is. So that would make sense. Uh, the crazy thing is the variety of sherries that they make range in types of grapes from some white grapes all the way to the deepest red. And so when you look at sherries, the spectrum of color that comes out of them is very different. Uh, I would too would be curious. My guess would be that they're using red wine grapes on this, uh, mostly because the color is so... It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's really beautiful. And since they're using uh, X wine barrels, so it's not a heavy char in those, it's a toasted barrel. So I'm guessing most of the color is actually coming from the grape, not from the wood. And the, whereas this is a, a charred barrel yes. and that's what's imparting the color. So that's pretty wild. But no, it's, it's really interesting to see side by side. And then now I'm obviously drinking more of the whistle pig at this yes. point, because I want to nurse this later. Yes. But like I said, off of, off of first sip, it was just like, oh, I want this more. Mm -hmm. But it's actually starting to, they're, they're surprisingly complimentary. They are. Because yes. I, I was going to say that. Yeah. Yes. They're surprisingly complimentary. Yeah. All right. You ready? Suicide? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Do we not get lime and salt? No. <laughs> I, uh, that kills me. When I, I somebody know. takes a really good tequila I and they, know. I'm like, why did you, well, all right. So uh, actually earlier I was talking with Micah, who's behind the camera, um, and he's, Painfully shy. Right. Just in general, shy guy. He, he, he's like, I can't, I can't come up. No, I'm just kidding. He's not shy at all. But uh, I, I told Micah that I was going to tell, <laughs> tell him a, a tell a funny story. So at the original Whiskey Girl downtown, uh, we had a uh, private party one time. But one of the people that was at the party that was kind of in charge of this fundraiser that was happening was like, Hey, what what do you think is one of your best uh, whiskeys that you have here. Uh, I was like, well, what kind of whiskey do you like? And he said, uh, I like scotch. So I was like, well, we have a 30 year fine oak Macallan. I think it's wonderful. And I didn't think he was saying this to buy some, mm. but he, he's like, well, I'll have one of those. And I was like, well, do you know how much it is? And you know, I told him how much it was and he kind of opened his eyes a little bit. Cause I mean, it's a $5,000 bottle. So it's, it's an expensive shot. So he's like, well, I'll take one anyway. So I, I poured for him. And he, he was like, can you uh, come with me? I want you to give this to the candidate um, and, and, and tell him about it. So I, I walk over with the gentleman and I handed him the whiskey and I uh, said, this gentleman wants to buy you this. And I was about to start telling him, well, 
he took the shot and just bucked it and drank it like he was at a fraternity party. Oh my gosh, yes. And I was like, and the guy that was paying for it was definitely like, and then he looked at me and goes, don't say anything. Oh my God. And I was like, okay. okay. And so I, I turned around and I walked away and I, all I could think of was that guy just literally bucked my mortgage. Like that, it was, it was, and, wow. and, and he later went on to be famous for being a prolific beer fan. Yes. So it kind of made sense that he, he was trying to get over the whiskey because he's not a whiskey drinker, he likes beers. I almost wonder if he would do that with this great with tequila. One, yes, wow. would just go right down. I actually think I might prefer the uh, tequila. Ooh. Nice. Um, so the, the piggyback is definitely almost like a like spiced cherry. Yes. Um, which is great. But this is it's this is like rich and creamy. It just keeps changing too. The longer it sits and, in your glass, it opens up more and, and more. and it gets over that like like when you have a blanco, it, it's kind of like rough yes. around the edges, and it's like super agave. Yes. Um, this is not that. No. Um, and I'm super curious about the wine barrels. It's it's really interesting to me when you sip it because the the smoke note on this is very there but not when you first put it in your mouth you don't catch that intense earthy smoke until you swallow it it changes completely it's it's probably one of the most interesting products i've ever had yeah that's absolutely delicious good find i agree for sure. dolce vita. yeah live in la dolce vita <laughs> I was thinking you might. <laughs> I know you are. I can hear it. Where is it? Pour me another. <laughs> <laughs>